It was nearly three years ago when Laura Stack's 19-year-old son Johnny died by jumping from a six-story building. And Laura says legalization allowed Johnny to easily access high-potency marijuana concentrate that she says led to psychosis and ultimately his death. And Laura, first, I'm, I'm so sorry for your loss. First, take me through the moment that you got that phone call. It's hard to relive that, something you try to put out of your mind. It was early in the morning, the phone rang, and I suspected it would be Johnny, and looked down instead and saw Douglas County Police Department, and woke up my husband and said, uh, the police are at the door, and I asked them, do you have Johnny with you? And they said, no, ma'am, I'm sorry, I do not. And a cold chill went through my veins, and I went down, and there was a police officer and a woman in black standing there. We let them in, instinctively sat down, asked what happened. He said, ma'am, I'm with the coroner's office, and I'm so sorry to tell you that your son is deceased. So I heard myself uh, screaming, falling into my husband's arms, and that was honestly the, the last thing that I suspected. I thought maybe he was in jail or had gotten into a car accident or something else. I did not expect that he was gone. When you found out how he died, did you immediately connect that back to the conversation where he said you were right? It wasn't until after his death when I started writing and researching and forming our nonprofit that I really understood the potency and how what he had used had ruined his mind, and he knew it had. But I didn't know about how brain development changes, even though you can't die from an overdose because there aren't cannabinoid-1 receptors in your brain stem, you can absolutely overdose on it and have acute intoxication, a five-fold increase in psychosis, a seven-fold increase in suicidality. According to the National Institutes on Drug Abuse, cannabis use does cause suicidal thinking, suicide attempts, and sadly, suicide in my son. And when, when he died, he did not have THC in his blood, correct? No. In fact, when you use THC enough and have enough psychotic episodes, you must be sober. Many young people are misdiagnosed with things such as bipolar and schizophrenia when actually it's a cannabis-induced psychosis. And many doctors yet, and we can talk with Dr. Lav, are not yet trained to recognize it. My son was diagnosed with THC abuse severe. We have no mental illness in our family. We have no history of psychosis. He also did not have any medical conditions that would have warranted this. These children are not hired. They legally walk into the pot shop dock. They pay a few hundred dollars. They complain of a migraine or a backache. They are given a recommendation that they can walk into a dispensary legally, as he did at 18, and purchase anything that they want. They have very little smell. They are very easy to disguise. They go to the school. They don't have to be hired. There are 3,500 as of December of 2021, 18 to 20 year olds in Colorado with medical marijuana cards, only 132 17 year olds. So all of a sudden, on their 17th year, 364 day birthday, they develop a chronic and debilitating condition. Of course not, the whole thing is a farce. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.